Well, we have the face of Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Good. You know, you have talked about... Well, we can't even... Inter- Benedict. Okay, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to be heard about this. <laughs> All right, we'll try to ask you a few questions. Sure. You have talked about how much fun it has been to play different versions of yourself. Talk a little bit about the challenges of that and what helped you step in without giving anything away. I mean, you know, this is a very rich and complex character as it is. And then when he comes up against other versions of himself, it just gets even more interesting. And as an actor, the challenge is to make him same, same, but different and have fun with it. And yeah, I can't wait to see how the audiences respond to what we've done. Well, we recently saw you in Spider-Man No Way Home where you maybe did a spell that went a little haywire. Possibly. What I had some did help you do? screwing it up. Oh, I need some rude Very word, true. But you fixed it. You fixed it. But I how is it. Stephen feeling after the mayhem he maybe helped create? Uh, a little forgetful. <laughs> Uh, uh, and um, I think ready to not screw things up again. So uh, hopefully he doesn't. I don't know. I don't know if he's learned. I mean, the reality is when we saw him with the teenager in yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home, I don't know. Yeah. So talk he's, about uh, his... He's not an ideal parent, that's for sure. He's definitely on a steep learning curve when it comes to babysitting. So, hey, look, I think Peter was a foot soldier that he knew and trusted and wanted to help. And everything that he failed to do exactly or according to any kind of code is very much in him, but also his love of a guy that he grew very fond of and cared for. So I think it's a human failing, if it is a failing. So, yeah, we'll have to see where it goes with... uh, with America in this one. Well, let's talk about that dynamic. So again, being yeah. paired up with another teenager. So what's yeah. this dynamic that you two, you and Sochi Gilma has created between your two characters? I think it's interesting because despite her youth, she, you know, the, the pupil teacher dynamic flips around a lot in this film. And basically, I think it starts from a position of equal distrust and then evolves into something whereby they work very well together. You know, one of the things that Sam Raimi talked about in an interview was really how there were particular things that you wanted to explore with Doctor Strange and and the fact that it was a very collaborative relationship. Are there things, directions that you were curious to take him in that you can share? Uh, The last third of the film in particular, which (laughs) is true Marvel fashion, came together quite late. Um, You know, I feel like I'm a guardian of this character, so uh, the integrity sort of rests with me, so I fought for a lot of... Uh, a lot of the stuff you'll see in the picture and some that you won't. <laughs> well, we also in this film get to see you work with Elizabeth Olsen in this one, a fellow yeah. sorcerer. So what was it like getting to work uh, with her? She's just a joy. There's nothing I can say that hasn't already been said about how superlative she is as a human being and an actress, but I will anyway. She's mesmerizing to watch. She's so consummate. You just kind of fall under her spell, pun intended. And she's just a delight. She's the first not to take it or herself at all seriously and have fun. So that's a really great combination. And it's a really lovely day for everybody when she's on set. Speaking of that, like every time I hear people talk about Sam Raimi, they talk about how nice he is, how kind he is, how sensitive. And yet he's bringing scary, spooky elements. So how does that manifest itself on set? What's it actually like? Can you describe the atmosphere for the fans? I was going to try to describe him as a complete and utter but he's not. He's probably one of the nicest human beings I've ever had the good fortune to work with. I mean, for somebody who has that much of an iconic status, both in horror and in uh, superhero movies, he wears it very, very lightly. He's very collaborative. He's very humble. And it's just a joy to be working for him as your first audience and the trust you can place in him because of his expertise in, in this very particular blend of horror and action hero it's just, it's wonderful. You feel, you feel secure. So that's, that's pretty much everything you can ask for in a director. You want to please them, you know? Well, talking about what's like, what it's like to work on set, you know, there's a lot of visual effects. Yeah. What is it like? Like, how are you able to keep your performance so grounded about well, a green screen? I think or... all of this has to be grounded in character. Yeah. It has to be grounded in real world humanity that people, these great people lining our streets and myself as a fan before I became part of this can... Can, can, can recognize, can see traits of their lives or their behavior, the human condition that's unique to all of us, even if we are superheroes. And I think Strange came from an ordinary place, you know, uh, as, as brilliant as he was as a neurosurgeon, he was somebody you could recognize in our world. So he wasn't born with a superpower, he had to discover it. And uh, I think that's kind of inspiring as well to think oh, there's, po- there's possibilities in all of us that remain there to be found and and tapped into and developed and enjoyed you know and I think yeah I think the humor and the pathos that that then brings when these people have uh, painful chapters in their character arcs and their stories is is, is even more deeply felt